Welcome to a look at World's Fair 1893 Second Edition. A big thank you to Renegade Game Studios for sending us a review copy of this new version of World's Fair for us to check out. So World's Fair 1893 was designed by J. Alex Kevern and features artwork by Adam P. McIver and Beth Sobel. This new printing of the game does add Jade R. Rogers, the founder of the House of Afros, Capes and Curls, as a historical consultant. Now, the original version of World's Fair 1893 was published in 2016 by Renegade Game Studios. Now, this new edition is also published by Renegade Game Studios and was released early in 2021 as an Amazon exclusive game. Now, this new edition of the game has a lowered MSRP of $40 US. Now, as a bit of backstory, the 1893 World's Fair was held in Chicago as the 400th anniversary of Columbus's voyage being the sort of overarching theme of the fair. And it was a vital aspect of showing that Chicago had more than just recovered after the fires a decade pri prior, but was a thriving metropolis. In addition, the Ferris wheel was invented for this event and this game does not let you forget that. As you can see on the image in the middle here between us. So in World Fair 1893, players take on the role of organizers of the fair competing for the best reputation. Now they're gonna earn this reputation by using their supporters to gain influences over the five areas of the show, which is manufacturing, electricity, fine arts, transportation, and agriculture. Now you're going to collect cards that will let you propose exhibits for each of these areas and use historical figures to affect your influence. Midway ticket sales will also affect your reputation, as will a variety of the, the variety of the approved proposals at the end of the game. Now the winner is the player with the most reputation after three rounds. To see what you get in this new edition of this classic area majority game, check out our World's Fair 1893 unboxing on YouTube. Now, the thing that shocked me the most upon opening this new edition of World's Fair is that it looks identical to the original game, like the, the inside of the box. The outside has a new cover, shiny new cover, but inside looked identical, like, like the same stuff. Uh, for some reason, I was under the mistaken impression that I was getting, getting a deluxe version. I, I thought this new printing was going to feature upgraded components in some way. I was surprised to learn that the only things that have changed is a new section of the rule book about the history of the World's Fair, specifically in reference to race, some new box art, and seven new influential figure cards. Other than these three small changes that have absolutely zero impact on the game's play, this new edition of World's Fair 1893 is identical to the 2016 printing. Which we must say is a solidly reviewed mm -hmm. and well-respected game to start with. I will say for those who haven't seen the original, the components you do get in this game are great. Uh, you got lots of thick cardboard that's easy to punch, a bunch of wooden car cubes and five different colors. Cards are well-designed and well-finished that can deal with shuffling often. Rules are very clear and easy to learn the game from with lots of examples of gameplay featuring actual game components. And I do say the new historical note that was added is a welcome addition and is well-written. Now, for any of you listening who haven't played the original World's Fair 1893 game, we'll be summarizing how to play the game. For those of you who are just here to see what's new, feel free to skip over the next section of this review and jump to our thoughts on the game. And now on to that gameplay summary. So you start by building the board, featuring a central board showing the giant Ferris wheel surrounded by five randomized area boards, one for each of those areas I mentioned earlier of manufacturing, electricity, fine arts, transportation, and agriculture. A timer in the form of the Ferris wheel car is placed at the bottom of the center of the board on the Ferris wheel, and there's a round tracker that's also down at the bottom. Start player is randomly determined and every player gets a start bonus card based on that. This is the way they balance out start player advantage. They're going to place supporters, uh, which are cubes, on the board, as indicated by this bonus board, as well as placing one cube on every area. Now, each of the five areas also gets two face-up cards drawn from the deck. These are placed just outside of the area. If you can see it, it makes perfect sense. Thank you for the randomized start player and not, you know, the last person who was on a midway or something. <laughs> yes, I do appreciate that. Now, each turn in World's Fair is really simple. The active player takes one of their cubes and puts it on one of the spots on the board. They then play any influential figure cards they've collected. 
These are going to let them add more supporters or manipulate the supporters already out, like putting one, an extra one where they just went or putting one adjacent to where they went or putting one on a specific color. Next, they take all the cards from the area they just played in. Then you refill. You take three new cards, you add them starting at the spot you just emptied and go clockwise around the board, adding new cards. Now, each area only has room for either three or four cards. And if an area is filled, you just skip over to the next one. That's pretty much it. Now, what these cards are that you're drafting are main exhibit proposals. These are color coded to each of the five areas of the fair and feature actual exhibits from the real life World's Fair. Now, players are going to hold on to these and convert them into approved exhibit tokens during the scoring round. Towers of light, speeding steam engines and artistic marbles, mm -hmm. and even a car from Daimler that helped inspire Henry Ford. Yeah, if you look at that card in that picture on there, you're like, I really, that looks like a Model T. Uh, your next type are those influential figures I mentioned, the historical people. These have to be played on your turn if you have them. You don't get to hoard them. And they manipulate the supporter cubes. They're going to let you place more or move cubes. Figures like George Westinghouse, Ida B. Wells, Bertha Palmer, and Irvine Garland Penn. Next are midway tickets. Uh, these do two things. So first, each ticket collected advances the Ferris wheel car around the board. If it makes it back to the bottom, you have a scoring round. These tickets also will generate points during that scoring round. Take a ride on a hot air balloon, see Harry Houdini, or check out the Arabian horses. Now, each game of World's Fair 1893 will feature three scoring rounds. During these rounds, players will get points for every midway ticket they've collected in the form of coins, pennies, as well as bonus points if they have collected the most, which is two points. All midway tickets are discarded after players receive their points, so every round that resets. Next, you go around the board and you score those five areas that have come up multiple times here and starting from the one to the left of the Ferris wheel and going around it. Now, this scoring uses a pure area majority mechanic. Points are awarded based on how many cubes you have in each section compared to the other players and what rewards you get are based on how many players you're playing with, with a different scoring card for every player count. Now, for example, a full four player game, the player with the most supporters gets a gold medal, which is worth four points. And the player in second gets a silver medal, which is worth two points. Now, in the case of a tie for first, both players get a silver, any other ties get nothing. Now this is the actual game park. So no fun historical facts here. Medals in 1893 were made out of, no, we'd have, we would have had to Google that one. Now, in addition to these medals in this game, which are made of cardboard, players can also turn in proposed exhibit cards matching the area that's currently being scored to get exhibit tokens. Now, this is, again, based on that same area majority system and based on player count. So for four players, that first person who got the gold medal may convert up to three cards into tokens, whereas the person in second only gets to convert one and so on. You can, if you won, you could turn your French bakery, chocolate pavilion, and Brazilian coffee into exhibit tokens. You could. Those are all from the uh, agriculture, are they not? I think. Now, after each area scored, players return one half rounded down of their supporters to their own supply. So they don't build up over rounds. Now, after the third scoring phase, there is a final end game scoring. This is where you get points. Um, you're going to convert your stuff. So your midway coins and your medals, you don't really convert them because they have numbers on them. You just add them up. Then everyone's going to get points for those exhibit tokens. Here, um, it's all about variety. It's about collecting complete sets of five different types to get the most points. So if you have five different ones, so if you have at least one token in all the five exhibit areas, you get 15 points. For example, if you only add two, though, you get three points. And it's one of those where all of your tokens will be broken into sets down to one point for an individual set with only one token in it. Add all that up, player with the most points wins. So now that we've covered how to play for people new to the game, let's get to the question I think most people want an answer on. Yeah. Is it worth picking up the new edition of World's Fair 1893? So I bought... World's Fair 1893, the original printing in June of 2016. Yes, that is the month it was released. And it has stayed in my collection ever since. This is a game that I'll play with my home group on Mondays and a game I will happily bring out to public play events to show off. I think this is a great lighter, like not the lightest, but lighter area majority game. And I have enjoyed every play I've ever played this game. I've never had a bad experience playing World's Fair. Now, the new edition is the same game. It's identical. There is no change to this game in this new edition in regards to gameplay. Now, 
I've said there are new cards added. Well, these replace duplicates from the base game with new historical figures on them. But they keep the same mechanics. Like the, the card distribution hasn't even changed. So due to this, I love the gameplay in World's Fair 2nd Edition just as much as I love the gameplay in the 1st Edition. This is the same game. And I do love it. It is a fantastic game. And I think this is a smart move. As honestly, as I said earlier, this is already a solid mm -hmm. game, but it had some very narrow views and representation, which have now been somewhat addressed without having to sacrifice any of the actual game part of the game. Right. Yeah, it's good. like overall, the game still features really simple stage rules. Like I basically just taught you how to play. Like this isn't one of those where I'm going to tell you, go read on the blog to find the full details of the rules. I pretty much covered everything. And I got to say that the, the mechanics kind of fit the theme fairly well. Like I love the Ferris wheel and the midway tickets being used to control the timing. And there's a whole thing where when you get later in the game, you're reshuffling the deck. So there's more midway cards. So it actually starts going faster. There's just some neat stuff going on there. And I actually adore the flavor text on these cards. The fact that every single one of these exhibit cards were actual exhibits and all of the historical figures are actual historical figures. I dig that aspect of the game. And I do have to say, almost everyone I introduce this game to spends their downtime between turns getting distracted by reading their cards and often actually learning something about the technology of the time period. Now, this does slow down the games a bit. I don't mind because you know what? Like there's an actual educational element to this game, which is something you don't always get out of board games. Because I know you're all interested in what Hagenbeck's menagerie really is. And I'm not going to spoil it. You're going to have to go pick up the game to find out. Now, it's this aspect of the game, the, the, the historical information and the, the flavor text that was actually improved in this new printing of World's Fair 1893 realizing that there were race and gender-based issues surrounding the World's Fair in 1893, addressing that and adding in more diverse historical figures is something I do applaud Renegade Game Studios for doing. Though I do find it a little odd that they chose to add seven new cards, but only four of them are actually black and only three of them are women. Like two of the new cards are more old white dudes. Also, with the new cards, there's only one of every single card of these new figures, whereas there's still at least two copies of all the original. So like their choice on who to replace and why is a little odd to me. Well, it's nice that they managed to keep the game balance. And with that solid rating of the game, it's odd to the trouble of making, uh, to go to the trouble of making any changes yeah. uh, to make ones as minor as they have. Like I admit it, I, I adore the, the added diversity. That's awesome. I, I do dig it. I appreciate it. I like that companies are actually thinking about these things now. It shows actual progress in the industry. That's awesome. But it doesn't do anything to make the gameplay better. And honestly, I, it doesn't feel like enough to warrant a full new printing of the game. And well, celebrating Christopher Columbus, as this World's Fair originally was intended to do, is arguably not the best thing we can be doing. Uh, maybe they could have picked a different World's Fair, but then they probably have to find all new art and all new fairs. Now, the other thing that is why they made a new printing, and I, this I do understand, right? So this did ruin a new printing. They got a contract with Amazon, Amazon.com. They now have an exclusive game only available through Amazon. And due to that agreement, this is now available cheaper than the original and to a bigger market. I think this is a great thing for getting a great game into the hands of more people. So that is appreciated, which leads me to the conclusion that I think the second edition of World's Fair 1893 is a great game, well worth picking up, but only if you don't have the original. There's just not enough here to justify two copies of World's Fair, two copies of basically an identical game. Again, I, I do appreciate the increased diversity. To me, though, that's just not enough to warrant buying another copy of a game I already own and enjoy. But if you haven't learned the joy of this game or already picked up your copy. It may be worth grabbing, right? Like, I, I, I just wish they'd done two things with this new product. For one, I wish they'd done more uh, to, to support people of color, to support indigenous people, to support underrepresented people. Uh, maybe doing something like donating a portion of the proceeds, whatever. A buck from every copy of the game sold gets donated to some worthy cause. That would have had me here in this exact same review saying, you know what? It's a great game. You probably worn out your original copy. Just go buy the new one. It supports a great cause. Unfortunately, I can't say that. Which leads me to the other thing I would have liked to have seen for those of us that do own the original is some kind of upgrade kit. 
some way to just get these new cards so we can make our actual copies of the game a little more diverse. And heck, maybe combine the two, right? Like put out a little expansion pack to get the new cards and donate something. I would have liked that. I don't think there's a good reason to buy the same game with all the same components with seven new cards and a couple paragraphs in the rule book. That's literally the only change. What I will say though, is if you don't own World's Fair, go grab this. Like uh, this is going to appeal to most. Like if you're a hobby gamer listening to us, you're probably going to dig this game. It's on Amazon and only on Amazon. And it even happens to be on sale right now at the time we're recording this sale. This show may still well be on sale after this 20% off right now. Just be sure to use one of our affiliate links if you do and help support this show. Yes, we would appreciate that. Now, if you are like me and already own World's Fair 1893, I leave the choice to you. Uh, I personally wouldn't feel it's worth upgrading, but for you, depending on your budget, maybe it is worth $40 for a whole new game for that added diversity and all the power to you. Well, that's it for our look at a new second edition of World's Fair 1893. I invite you to read more about this game in the review section of the blog over on tabletopbellhop.com.